This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'm glad that you are able to join me here uh, today. This is uh, Bible Way Church, uh, Columbus, Ohio. Praise God for you all being able to join us and uh, for this Bible study. And uh, God is good. God has been great. God has been faithful. God has been kind. And we're just going to jump right into the Word of God tonight, if that's all right with you. I'm Pastor Tim Ladder, uh, coming from Bible Way Church right here in Columbus, Ohio. I praise God for you all being able to join us here. And uh, uh, let's just start with a word of prayer. God, we thank you. We praise your God for all that you have done, what you have yet to do in us. And through us today, we ask, O oh Lord, that you have your way uh, in our hearts, have your way in our lives, O oh God, that uh, we might uh, bring you glory. Uh, and all that we say and all that we do. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you, everybody. Uh, we've been doing a study all summer long talking about uh, leading like Jesus. And so that's what we've been talking about. Uh, the greatest leader of all time is Jesus Christ himself. And so uh, we uh, want to learn from the best. If you want to uh, be the best, you got to learn from the best. We're learning uh, we're learning from Jesus Christ himself and uh, the leadership qualities, leadership capabilities, leadership characteristics of Jesus. And uh, and so that's what we've been learning uh, about. Last week we talked about servant leadership and we talked about the fact that to be a servant leader, you got to inspire greatness in others. And one thing that Jesus did, he inspired greatness in others. Uh, uh, one of the reasons why people, uh, so many people admire people like LeBron James or the late great uh, Bill Russell is because uh, they gave others the opportunity to shine. That's what Jesus did. Jesus uh, did not look to boast about himself. He looked to promote others, uh, and he pushed them to be at their best. And he wanted them to be at their, their them them to be great. Uh, another thing that great leaders do is they invest in their team. Uh, that's what Jesus did. Jesus invests in those. He invested in those that were around him. Uh, and like any uh, parent or coach uh, or teacher, as they pour into others, that's what Jesus Christ does for each and every one of us. He pours into us through his word, he pours into us uh, through his spirit. Uh, and then another thing that uh, great leaders do is they exist as performance coaches. That means uh, that they not only critique, uh, but they strive to help us to improve uh, by instruction. Uh, sometimes that instruction involves evaluation. Sometimes that instruction involves critique. Jesus was spending a lot of time with his disciples, teaching them, critiquing them, improving them. And he was the greatest leader of all time. This week, we're going to talk a little bit about, uh, a little bit more about another aspect of Jesus. And that is uh, Jesus as uh, his work as a carpenter. Uh, so approximately you know, 30 years, Jesus was... Uh, not in ministry, but uh, but 20 of those years, uh, let's just say that, give or take. Uh, he was working as a carpenter, learning to be a carpenter from uh, Joseph, his earthly uh, father. Turn with me to Matthew chapter number 13. Matthew chapter number 13, uh, verse number 54 through 58 says, And when he was coming to his own country, he taught them uh, in their synagogue, and so much as they were astonished and said, Whence hath this man his this wisdom uh, and these mighty works? Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary and his brethren James and Joseph, Joseph and, and Simon and Judas and his sisters? Are they not all with us? Whence then hath this man all these things? Uh, and they were offered, uh, offended in him. They were offended in him. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, save in his own country. And in his own house, and he did not uh, many mighty works there because of their unbelief. So tonight we're going to talk about Jesus as his work as a carpenter. Carpenters are are master craftsmen. They are men and women that are skilled with the art of um, skilled with the the art of, of problem solving. That's what uh, a lot of carpenters do. They problem solve. They know how to improvise. They know how to be creative. They, Jesus was a master craftsman. In the scriptures that we read today, uh, they speak of the astonishment. Uh, they were, the, the crowd was astonished uh, with the level of knowledge and expertise that Jesus had of the scriptures. 
uh, and the wisdom that he had. Uh, they were amazed at his wisdom and his maturity. Uh, Matthew chapter number 13, uh, verse number 55 and 56 says, Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary and his brother and James and Joseph and Simon and Judas and his sisters? Are they not all with us? Whence then has this man all these things? Where did he get all this knowledge is what they're asking. Where did he get, where did he get all this knowledge? Another way of saying this is, how could a carpenter's son, a carpenter's apprentice, if you will, know all these things? How could a carpenter's son, a master craftsman, be so knowledgeable about the things of God? How, how could uh, he or she have been trained in the, the best schools? How, uh, without going under the, and studying under the best teachers? It is, it, it's simple. Jesus Christ is Lord. He's Lord. Yeah, that song we, we sing, Jesus Christ, he is Lord. He's risen from the dead and he is Lord. Every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. 1 Corinthians 1 and 24 says that Jesus is the wisdom of God, the wisdom of God. Uh, during the first 30 years of seemingly, uh, of seemingly obscurity, uh, what was Jesus doing? He was uh, he was preparing himself. He was being prepared. What was he? he, he how did he get such s filled with such great wisdom? He was preparing himself. A uh, man by the name of uh, Israel Moore uh, I, Vayar said this. He said preparation is the key to leadership success. The more prepared you are, the less your struggle uh, to make it happen, and the more your effectiveness. Um, Malcolm X said that the future belongs to those that prepare for for it today. If you're going to prepare for, if you're going to be successful tomorrow, you got to prepare today. If you're going to be successful tomorrow, you got to prepare today. Prepa preparation is the key to leadership success. We've been talking about leadership. Well, one of the things that a lot of people don't want to talk about is preparation. It requires preparation. Jesus was was uh, receiving instruction not just from his earthly father, but also from his heavenly father. He was preparing himself for ministry. Listen, anybody that is involved in ministry, anybody that is involved in ministry and fails to prepare themselves is preparing to fail. Uh, they are putting themselves in grave danger. If you fail to prepare, you are preparing to fail. That's what uh, the great coach John Wooden once said. Ministry is not for the faint of heart. Ministry is not for the lazy or the ill-prepared. Jesus never just winged it. Uh, the apostles never just winged it after they were taught. Uh, they prepared themselves by prayer and fasting. A great carpenter uh, prepares themselves for the job that is at hand. If you if you hire a carpenter to come uh, and to work for you and do some some work for you, then uh, if they come unprepared and they're asking you for a screwdriver, asking you for a saw, asking you for a hammer, then there's a problem. <laughs> it's a problem. They're not prepared. Send them home. Uh, they, so you, you a, a skilled carpenter that just show up. Uh, ill-prepared, unprepared for what the task is at hand. Uh, they, they plan ahead. Uh, tonight, we're going to talk about the work of a carpenter. A great to, to be a great carpenter, the first thing that must happen is instruction. They must be trained. we got to be trained. Uh, great leaders are not born, they are made. I heard somebody say that a long time ago. They are made. Uh, they are made by being, by, by being great followers. They had to follow somebody. They had to learn from somebody. Uh, nobody becomes great by it just in a vacuum. They become great. We become great. Any of us become great by following somebody else. Let's talk about that a little bit for a minute. Great leaders uh, are first great followers. If you want to be a great leader, you must learn how to follow. There's a whole lot of people out here that want to lead, but nobody wants to follow. Every great leader was following somebody. Everybody. Look all the way down through history. Every great leader gained inspiration. Gain and gain instruction from somebody. Every great leader learned from somebody. To be a great leader, you must be a student of your craft. To be a great leader, you got to be a student of your craft. You got to you got to learn about your field of study, your your the, the, the thing that you want to have expertise in. You got to learn that from somewhere. Uh, if you want to be a good parent, you got to learn from other good parents. If you want to be a good teacher, you got to learn from other teachers. If you want to be a good husband, a good wife, a good engineer, banker, whatever it is, you got to learn from other people that are doing the same thing. Does that mean that you got to do the exact same thing they're doing? No, it doesn't mean that. 
But it does mean that there is a level of instruction, a level of, of knowledge that comes with doing the thing that you want to learn, the thing that you want to do. Whatever you want to do, do it well. Whatever you want to do, do it with excellence. Whatever you want to do, learn from those that are actually doing it. Whether you are learning in person or whether you are learning from afar. Uh, perfect what they are doing and then approve upon it, build upon it. The Bible speaks of Jesus at a young age, hanging out, out in the temple and learning from uh, the rabbis. In Luke chapter number two, Luke chapter number two, verse number 41, it says, Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the Feast of Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up uh, to Jerusalem after the, the custom of the feast. And when they were at Fulfilled the days as they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem and Joseph, and his mother knew not of it. But they, supposing him to have been in the company, went a day's journey, and they sought him among their kinfolk uh, and acquaintance. And when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem, seeking him. Uh, and it came to pass that after three days they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them, and asking them questions. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. And he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? Was that I must be about my father's business. Uh, when you are about your father's business, you got to understand uh, that there's a thirst for knowledge and understanding. There's a thirst for uh, the, the job to, to be done. There's a thirst for understanding. Jesus had a thirst for knowledge and for wisdom. And from the scriptures that we read, we had he had wisdom even at a young age. He had uh, immense wisdom even at a young age. He had a, he, and, and the religious leaders and the lawyers and the doctors there, they were astonished at his wisdom at a young age. Uh, and he sat and he reasoned with him just as he was taught. He taught his disciples. Matthew chapter number seven, Matthew seven twenty eight says during his earthly ministry, uh, Jesus astonished the people with his teaching. And at the end of the Sermon on the Mount, it is stated and it, it came to pass when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. The way that Jesus taught was not the same as those religious leaders that we find him uh, meeting with in uh, Luke, the second chapter. Uh, it was just not, he didn't teach the same way. He didn't just regurgitate the same thing uh, that the religious leaders of the day were saying. He had expounded upon the Old Testament. He, uh, and he, he, he expounded upon the words of the prophets. He taught as one having authority. He taught as uh, a prophet. He, uh, prophets are, are people that have vision, that are visionaries. They look ahead. They are able to foretell what thus saith the Lord. And they were used by God to see what others cannot see. They are used by God to see uh, what is set to come. Now, great carpenters are very similar in that they are visionaries. They're able to see things uh, that uh, others cannot see. Great carpenters are visionaries. They're able to see things that others cannot see. They can, uh, they, they can try to describe it for you, but it may not do it justice. They can try to describe it for you. Sometimes they can do it accurately. Sometimes they cannot. Blanchard, Hodges, and Henry said this. They said, good carpenters and great leaders must be able to envision something that does not yet exist and then commit to do what it takes to create it. I want you to understand that as God uses you and I, God will give you some things uh, to, and, and help you to envision some things uh, that do not exist yet. Um, but God will enable you to see that vision and see that thing that, 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 that needs to come to pass, and God can help you to use it. Now, some people, when they get a construction site, when they get into a job site, they might see a pile of two-by-fours and say, that's nothing but a, a but a bunch of pieces of wood. What is what is that? What am I, what am I going to do with that? That's nothing but a pieces but a bunch of pieces of wood. But a carpenter will look at that same pile and see a frame that they can make a an extra room out of. They can see uh, materials that they can uh, create furniture out of. They can see um, they 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 see they, they see tools uh, that they can create 
uh, with. And so if you're going to be used by God uh, to be a visionary, used by God to lead others, you must be able to, you must seek after the wisdom of God and get the direction of God uh, for your family, for your group, for your team, for whatever task or ministry uh, that you're involved in uh, and see what, what God is saying through the word of God. Matthew chapter number six says this. It says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. That doesn't mean that uh, that you neglect the, that, that you neglect the word of God. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that you fail to spend time in prayer. It says, seek God first. When you seek God first, uh, God will open up doors for you. When you seek God first, God will open up doors and opportunities for you. When you know that God is with you, when you know that God is leading you, uh, the, the, the vision that he has for you uh, will fall right into place, fall right into shape. Uh, Habakkuk 2 and 2 says this. It says, And the Lord answered and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon the tables that he may run that readeth it. But the one thing that you must understand is that when you are walking with the Lord is this. Nothing comes without a cost. I'll say it again. Nothing comes without a cost. It's going to cost you your time. It's going to cost you your uh, your money is going to cost you. You might need to com commit to some things. Great leaders, uh, carpenters have they have to count the cost. Uh, so when you look at the the word of God, great carpenters are great planners. Uh, every team, group, family, uh, or church needs to count the cost before any carpenter begins work. Uh, they've got to count the cost. They uh, they, they they can estimate. The cost, some, some can estimate the cost right down to the penny. Uh, some are not so good at it. Uh, they, will, they can quote you one thing, and some, some people will quote one thing, and then they'll begin, uh, the, the cost will begin going up and up and up and up and up, and then next thing you know, uh, it's way more than what, is, what they quoted you. <laughs> uh, but what I'm getting at is that we need some, some leaders that are able to be realistic about the cost of success. The cost of success is going to cost you something. It's going to cost you something. Good coaches, parents, leaders, they're, they're more than just uh, than, than, than teachers. They're, they're, they've got to be counselors. They've got to be uh, motivational speakers. They've got to be the, your psychologist, your disciplinarian. Great leaders know, uh, they, they know going in that I've got to give up something, uh, give up to, or sacrifice something for the good of the group. Blanche's Hodges and Henry said this. They said never... Jesus never downplayed the cost of following his leadership. He said, Jesus never downplayed the cost of following his leadership. Uh, Luke 9 and 23 says, And he said unto them, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. That means it's going to take consistency. It's going to take commitment. Uh, it's going to take sacrifice and headache and heartache. It's going to be some good days and some bad days. It's going to be some hills to climb. Uh, and so, but, the, but the great thing about great leaders is this. They never ask you to do anything that they are not willing to do themselves. Sign of a great leader is that they will never ask you to do a thing that they are not willing to do themselves. Uh, I have uh, two more things and then we'll get out of here. Great leaders, great carpenters uh, also use a variety of tools. Great carpenters also use a, ver a variety of tools. What does that mean? A, a good coach, a good teacher, a good parent is not a one-trick pony. They don't just do that one thing over and over again. They got more than one trick up their sleeve, if you will. They utilize more than just one strategy to motivate. To motivate. They use more than one strategy to inspire. They use more than one strategy to lead. Uh, Blanchard, Blanchard Hodgins and Henry said this. They said a good, uh, a good performance coach realizes that people are not all at the same level of development. That means everybody is not the same. Everybody, I'll say it again, is not the same. Jesus didn't treat all his disciples the same. Our Heavenly Father doesn't uh, treat all of us the same. Uh, there were things that Jesus uh, said to Peter that might have broken the spirit of some of the other uh, disciples. I uh, remember Jesus told Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. Uh, but he had a relationship with Peter that enabled him to speak harshly to him when he needed to. Uh, and he taught him. Uh, but his relationship with Peter was different than the others. 
And when he taught, he taught sometimes in parables and stories. Uh, Jesus also often taught, uh, he, sometimes he used um, examples that, that might have seemed outrageous uh, or exaggerations or, or shocking uh, to some. Matthew 5 says this, Matthew chapter number 5 and 29 says, If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out, throw it away, for it is better that you lose one of your members than your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away, for it is better you lose one of your members than your whole body to going in hell. Jesus was driving home the message that sin is destructive and that we must take it seriously. Instead of just talking, Jesus was uh, like, like talking to a, a brick wall. Jesus told, talked to them in a way that would get their attention. Uh, does that mean that you need to go and, and carve your eye out and throw it out or cut your hand off? Uh, no, it does not mean, it does not mean that. And I'm glad about that. Yeah. Uh, but it does not mean that. But Jesus went about a multiple different ways of getting the point across. Jesus would also ask questions. Questions are a powerful teaching tool. Asking questions. He, uh, especially when, you know, when people are hostile, Jesus asked questions uh, because there was, it caused them to think. It caused them to respond. Questions stimulate critical thinking. Good questions make the audience demand answers. And uh, don't ever underestimate the, uh, the potential, the power of a good question. Sometimes Jesus got uh, his message uh, across by performing signs, wonders, and miracles. But the scriptures that we read earlier tells us that as a master craftsman, educator, leader, uh, prophet, teacher, uh, there was only so much that he could do. Uh, that means that you're not uh, Superman or Superwoman. You don't, and you don't have to be. Matthew 13, 57 and 59 says, And they were offended in him. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, save in his own country and in his own house. And he did not many, many works or mighty works there because of their unbelief. You can take a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. You ever heard that before? You can take a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. What the scripture uh, what we read tells me this. It says, great carpenters are great, but they can't do everything. The crowd was limiting uh, the things that Jesus was able to do because of his unbelief. Now, now God is omnipotent. Jesus is Lord. He is, he is God in the flesh. He can, there's nothing that God cannot do. He's omnipotent, all-powerful, everywhere, present at the same time, all-knowing. Yes, he's all these things, but they were limiting what he was able to do or what he wanted to do uh, because of their unbelief. Uh, God chose to limit what he did because of their unbelief. He could have did it anyway, but God chose to limit because of their, of their unbelief. And that made me think, what are the things that we do that limit the Lord uh, from, because of our unbelief? What are the things that we do that are limiting? Uh, what, are we, what are the things that we are doing that are standing in the way of God doing great things uh, in our life? Now unto him that's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. What is it that we are doing that is limiting? what God is able to do in our lives, in our, in our surroundings, in our, uh, in our walk of faith. Uh, God can do great things in ministry, great things in, in, uh, in leadership, but we got to have faith to take the limits off uh, of an unlimited God. You got to take the limits off an unlimited God. Uh, faith is the key that unlocks the door to the supernatural power of God. It, un it makes God's power unlimited. The last thing I want to share with you is this. Great carpenters, great carpenters are lifelong learners. Great carpenters are lifelong learners. They're lifelong learners. We got to understand that great leaders are lifelong learners. Uh, Blanchard, Hodges, and Henry said this. They said leaders who maintain a teachable spirit. Do you have a teachable spirit? They said leaders who maintain a teachable spirit and stay alert to changing times and conditions will also maintain their effectiveness in guiding others. Jesus never desired to leave his uh, disciples empty-handed. He chose to give them continued education. He chose to give them access to the Holy Spirit after he uh, ascended up into the heavens. Luke chapter number 14, 
verse number 16 says, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. The Holy Spirit is a teacher. The greatest leader of all time left him under direction of a great teacher, another great teacher. Master carpenters learn and develop from uh, master carpenters. In every field, in every occupation, in every industry, uh, just think about it. You, you, you don't want to go to a doctor that has not had continuing edu continued education. You don't want to go to a nurse that has not had continued education. You do not want to take your car uh, to some place or have someone come into your home to work on appliances or work on whatever, and they have not had continued education. They're not uh, aware of the advancements of, of the day. Uh, but every occupation, every field, requires continued education. When you come into the family of God and, and, and you are becoming leader in Christ's church, then you cannot just rest on your morals. You cannot just rest on what you learned yesterday. No, you got to continue to study to show yourself approved, continue uh, to learn and, 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 and be fed by the word of God. Uh, you look at the Apostle Paul, the Apostle Paul. Uh, he, he had accomplished great things, almost writing ha almost half the New Testament in. Uh, and after all that he achieved, he still realized, I still got work to do. Uh, I still have not attained uh, everything that I, that, I, that I should and can attain. Uh, Philippians 3 says this, I don't mean to say that I've already achieved these things or that I have already reached perfection, but I press on uh, to profess that perfection for which Christ Jesus first possessed in me. He says, no, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, uh, but I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on. The King James Version said, I press put toward the mark for the prize of the high calling. He said, I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. I want you to understand. I'm already done tonight, but I want you to understand it. Uh, I, I just want you to know that Jesus was... Uh, and is a, a great carpenter, and we are supposed to be skilled at whatever we do, uh, improving at whatever we do, striving for greatness and excellence in whatever we do. Uh, Ecclesiastes uh, 9 and 10 says, Whatever your hand findeth to do, do with all thy might, for there is no work, no device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave, whether thou goest. If we're going to do anything else, uh, we won't do anything for Christ. We need to do it with excellence. Whatever your hands find to do, do it with all your might. Do it with excellence. Do it with a spirit of excellence, a, a spirit of bringing glory to God. Learning to lead like Jesus involves training. Doing the work that God has called for us to do requires training. Continual training, continued education in the Word of God. Continued education uh, in studying uh, the, the Word of God, uh, sitting under the word of God hearing. Now, sometimes you say, well, I heard that one before. But guess what? Sometimes God can speak to you in a way that you can hear those verses. You can hear an explanation of the scriptures uh, in a way that you've never heard before. Uh, we are trained to study. The, to, we gotta, we gotta, to be trained, we got to study to show ourselves approved. To be trained, we got to uh, become lifelong uh, learners. Uh, 2 Timothy 2 uh, in 15, closing out with this, says this, Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Listen, I want you to understand. Um, you've got to look into the word of God. Study the word of God. Read the word of God. Uh, somebody said it uh, best. Uh, when you read the word of God, the word of God will read you. Uh, the word of God will read you. I think Elder Mix said that on Sunday morning. You got to, When you read the word of God, the word of God will read you. I pray that you heard something here tonight and that you uh, learned something from a carpenter, uh, the carpet, that, that carpenter from, uh, from, from Nazareth uh, that uh, taught us that, hey, you got to be a continued learner. You got to uh, continue to uh, learn. From, you got to learn uh, your craft. You got to uh, persist. You got to learn uh, to uh, improve uh, and uh, we, we learn a lot from Jesus as a master carpenter. All right. Hey, God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us here today. Uh, let's just end with a word of prayer. God, we thank you. We ask, oh God, that you continue to bless us and help us, oh God, to uh, learn more and more of your word and to learn, learn, Lord God, to, uh, to roll up our sleeves and 
uh, and, and get busy serving you, Lord God, in this world. There's so many that need to hear the gospel. There's so many that need uh, to receive salvation. Help us, O oh God, to be uh, good stewards of this word uh, and to do the work of a carpenter. We thank you. And to build uh, the kingdom of God as you have called for us to do. Live out the Great Commission. We thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us. If you're so moved to give, you can give through the Bible Way Church app. Uh, and that is on uh, Google Play and also the App Store. You can also give through the website as well, BibleWayChurchColumbus.com. Or mail your love gift to us as well, 453 South Wheatland Avenue, Columbus, Ohio. Uh, we will be uh, at in uh, worship Sunday morning at 11 a.m. I encourage you to, to join us. Join us in person in the sanctuary 453 south wheatland avenue columbus ohio uh there is a um rehearsal coming up this friday uh, or saturday i'm sorry um for our ministry praise ministry praise and worship ministry and also hey growth has a, a back to school event coming up on august 13th keep that in mind hey we're gonna bless this community come on out and serve with us all right hey god bless you thank you so much for joining us here uh, today, and I encourage you to keep lifting up the name of Jesus and uh, all that you do. God bless you, everybody. Have a blessed week.